to the uh, annual uh, Social Science Research Center lecture, uh, co-sponsored co by the Economics Department. Uh, we're very glad to have today uh, Dennis Ahern, who, in the context of today's talk, was the author of uh, Inside the Celtic Tiger, published by Pluto Press, uh, a number of years back, and was one of the first authors to identify, uh, to a certain extent, the the uh, the level at which the tiger itself had feet of clay. Uh, Dennis has been over the last uh, two or three years relocated from uh, Queens and Belfast to Binghamton in New York. Uh, teaching in the sociology departments of both places. Uh, and probably, unfortunately, uh, Dennis has, has missed uh, living in the, in the Tiger during the period of its demise. Uh, and it is back, really, for the first time. Um, he's, he's given this talk in a couple of other locations, so I think it's the first time in uh, to. Uh, basically assess uh, the tiger in light uh, of the economic crisis and the economic collapse of the last two or three years. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I'll let Dennis get into reassessing the Celtic tiger in its rise uh, and then subsequent. Uh, thank you, Terry, and thanks to the center for inviting me here today. Uh, nice to be back in Galway. It's been a little while. Um, I suppose first by way of just kind of an introduction, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give my disclaimer, which is, of course, I haven't been around, as Terry said, during the demise of the Celtic Tiger, uh, which I guess I could take some credit for uh, <laughs> predicting. You know. It went on longer than I expected, actually, and, and more happened, uh, I think, during the period of the Celtic Tiger than, than I probably would have originally expected, and other people like Ronnie Monk and uh, Patter, Kirby, and Terry, who, who have watched this thing happen, you know, were, were somewhat taken aback at the power of uh, the Celtic Tiger. But now I think it's an interesting time to begin to look back at it. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that a lot of you know a lot more than I do about the details of the, uh, uh, certainly of the collapse. Uh, so it, this may be a bit like trying to teach Granny to suck eggs, but uh, if you'll excuse me for that, what I really want to try to do today is to try and put the whole thing into a bit of a context. Uh, so that the main thing I think which uh, I can try and provide at least is to talk about uh, the way in which we can think of the rise and demise of the Celtic Tiger in a kind of a large uh, context. As some of you may know, uh, uh, Binghamton, where I work now in the Ferdinand Braudel Center, uh, and Binghamton is kind of the home of world systems analysis and Emmanuel Wallerstein and Giovanni Arrighi and many people uh, who we're kind of at the forefront of at least one approach to uh, understanding globalization and global processes over long historical periods. And that's very much the way that I work, although I have some very uh, sort of fundamental differences with many of the world systems people as well. And I'll just talk a little bit about kind of some initial foundations of uh, how I'd like to, to talk about uh, this subject today. Uh, th these are a few things that I think are important just to keep in mind. Uh, the first thing which strikes me is the difference between proximate and essential causes. It's a problem that I've had with economics for a long, long time. Not with all economists, but many economists. Uh, uh, forgive me to those economists who may be uh, fans of proximate causes. But I mean, I'm hearing things about debt crisis and bank crisis and so on and so forth as if those things are independent of and not connected to much longer processes that are, are bigger and really more essential to the rise and, and fall of uh, what we usually talk about as economic development uh, uh, processes. So I think it's important, first of all, to begin to think about this thing in a longer term context and in a broader context. I suppose I come from a long period of living in a place where they saw the Battle of the Boyne as some kind of a local conflict between Catholics and Protestants rather than part of the World War. And, uh, you know, often that seems to be the way that a lot of economists are also viewing 
uh, things about uh, phenomena like the Celtic Tiger. The second thing that I just wanted to mention is that I think, and Terry has done a lot of work on this as well, and I think very good work, that it's very important to think about the way that we conceptualize local and global. Uh, and this really is where I've had sort of the biggest debates with some of the world systems people, because certainly the way that Emmanuel Wallerstein originally introduced the concept of a world system was very powerful and very important, but it gave us the conception that globalization, imperialism, a world system is something that is kind of created from above and then imposed down uh, onto uh, localities within that world system. And as an alternative to that, there is a, a, an approach that many of us have been a lot closer to called the incorporating comparison, which tries to take into account the degree to which each locality has its own specificities. It inserts itself into globalization and into a global system uh, in a way which has certain peculiarities according to uh, the way that each locality is placed. And these can be things that have to do with the uh, kinds of raw materials that are available, the histories of uh, the development of, uh, of different classes and class conflict and, and class structures and so on, and all of those kinds of things. Uh, here are, are a few things that are very important uh, in that respect. Global division of labor is a central concept in world system analysis, but the global division of labor isn't simply something that's imposed from above on different kinds of localities, but it's something which is kind of negotiated uh, over different periods between localities and uh, various sections of capital, the nation states, and more recently more with uh, international uh, regulatory body bodies. Uh, a new kind of global division of labor gets reinstituted in each successive cycle of accumulation, uh, but what that means for localities is something that can't just be read from above, but has to be read from below, and it gets created in this process of, of contention that goes on between localities and uh, larger groups. So cycles and regimes of accumulation, again, is, is something that's very important. Uh, here, uh, one important work, I think, on this was Giovanni uh, Arrighi's work, the, the long 20th century, where he talks about the ways in which each specific cycle of accumulation has a different kind of a solution in terms of forms of territorial control, uh, investment patterns, uh, divisions of labor, leading sectors, and so on and so forth. Uh, and again, these are things that get built from below that have to be negotiated between localities and, and the system as a whole. Uh, and in this respect, uh, to a certain extent, uh, work like David Harvey's recent work on the enigma of capital, uh, it, don't read the book, but have it, has anyone seen the cartoon? Uh, if, if you have, I mean, it's, it's definitely worth looking at. Uh, where, and this goes back to the, the concept of the uh, proximate and essential causes of crisis, where, you know, crisis may have a very essential cause such as inadequate demand, overproduction, overconsumption, or whatever, whichever preference you have uh, at a specific time for explaining capitalist crisis. But that, that cause of crisis, which is underlying or essential, uh, may be expressed in a more specific way. And I think this is particularly important in the, in the way that we are seeing what's happening in Ireland now. So that there is a fix of some kind for the underlying crisis. Uh, and the fix may, in fact, be something like debt. And in fact, Harvey says that this is the most recent fix for the global crisis of neoliberal capitalism, is the introduction of a kind of debt regime, which, of course, is not sustainable. Whether you have corrupt bankers or not, whether you have regulators or not, that kind of a fix is unsustainable. So that the crisis appears as a debt crisis, but there's something more fundamental which is going on behind it. So I guess that's one of the uh, important things that, uh, uh, that, that I'd like to put forward. Uh, some other concepts which I think are important are things like path dependencies and switching points, the idea that the kind of development regime or the place within a, a cycle of accumulation that a locality embarks on can have a very strong influence on what happens in subsequent periods. 
So in Ireland, for example, I think that the period of the late 1940s going into the 1950s, uh, in terms of the transition from import substituting industrialization to export-led industrialization, is absolutely crucial. And that the uh, nature of the Irish development strategy and development regime uh, has changed in some ways, but there are certain fundamentals that have remained fairly uh, much the same since the 1950s, uh, and particularly since that was consolidated in the 1970s with entry uh, into the European Union. Uh, switching points ask the question about the degree to which these kinds of path dependencies can be overcome. And quite often the movement from one cycle of accumulation or regime of accumulation to another is a way in which uh, this can happen, or a time in which this can happen, and, and each locality attempts to build a new uh, solution within the context of, of global accumulation. So in Ireland, uh, and I, I talk about this in my book on the Atlantic economy, uh, there was a continual attempt every time there was a new accumulation regime, whether it was based on wool, whether it was based on cotton, whether it was based on uh, automobiles, cars, and uh, consumer durables, etc. There was an attempt by localities such as the Irish, uh, as, as, as Irish classes and, and the Irish state and state actors and so on, to try and renegotiate the place that this island had within that emerging uh, global accumulation regime. Uh, so those are important things, and, and within that context, you know, often we refer to iterative solutions. That basically, this is an ongoing uh, kind of conflict between localities and the larger global system. Um, well, recently, I'll, I'll just quickly go over this. We've been doing some work on what we call situations of dependency, which comes out of the work of Fernando Enrique Cardoso, who used to be a left-wing sociologist and then became president of Brazil. Um, and he wrote a book uh, about dependency, uh, about dependent development in Brazil, which I think many of us have been rediscovering and thinking it was really very important. And, kind of, and dependency theory, I don't know how many people kind of know about it, but it had to do with the degree to which localities became dependent on various kinds of processes of investment, divisions of labor, and so on, which were largely determined at the international level, but which were determined specifically at each local level. And Cardoso uh, began to develop an idea about how do localities have some kind of power to negotiate, form alliances, and try and, and create uh, a, a better position within that. Now, dependency theory kind of stopped then uh, at, at the time of, of Cardozo's book, World System Analysis kind of became more important. Various other forms of globalization and other kinds of things began to take its place. But uh, I'm hearing more and more people asking about whether, you know, the baby got thrown out with the bathwater. And there are elements of dependency theory which we could go back to. But thinking more about the way that Cardozo referred to dependent development and the possibility that there is some kind of restricted uh, but real development which can happen in localities, but which often leads to the kind of crisis that we've seen today in, in Ireland and Greece and in various other kinds of places. Uh, and and uh, that, you know, the idea of some kind of, of negotiated and conflictual dependency uh, is still a very uh, 